Free-to-play games have become one of the mainstays in gaming on all platforms, and even though they sometimes have a negative stigma attached to them, there's no doubt that free-to-play games are here to stay. And that's what we're going to be covering in today's video, specifically 12 upcoming free-to-play games in 2019 and beyond. Without further ado, let's get right into it and let's kick things off with a free-to-play title coming to the PlayStation 4 in Caravan Stories. Caravan Stories is a beloved Japanese MMORPGs and it's officially coming to the PlayStation 4 in North America. It's got a heavy emphasis on world building with a large number of interwoven character stories and an astounding amount of gameplay features. The game will be free-to-play on the PlayStation 4 and it also touts a beautiful orchestral soundtrack and dreamy art style brushed softly with watercolor tones to yield a vibrant world worth exploring. Caravan Stories hits the PlayStation 4 this summer. Next up, we have Bless Unleashed. This is coming from Bandai Namco, and it's the premier next-generation MMORPG, and it is noted that it's coming first to Xbox One. However, it was also rated for PlayStation 4 on ratings board. Usually, that means that the game is going to come to the PlayStation 4 at some point, and given that it was noted to come first to the Xbox One, I imagine a PlayStation 4 release will happen sometime down the line as well. It's an MMORPG built for mature audiences. Bless Unleashed takes players on an epic multiplayer journey across a vibrant and persistent world that tasks the brave with battling and surviving vicious lethal monsters that inhabit an untamed landscape. Gather your allies close as the unspeakable monsters of the world salivate for your grim and stand fast and stoke your fury. We don't have an exact release window for Bless Unleashed, but hopefully it comes sooner rather than later, and I think Bless Unleashed is the type of free title and an MMORPG that would be right up the alleys of console players, especially given the gameplay style and whatnot, so let's hope it is out soon. Next up, we have Splitgate Arena Warfare. Splitgate Arena Warfare is a fast-paced multiplayer shooter that uses player-controlled portals to create a new dimension of arena combat. Evoking memories of the most revered shooters of the past two decades, Splitgate Arena Warfare embraces the classic and familiar feel of close-quarters combat while adding a multi-directional twist that adds never-before-seen spatial wrinkle, battle against up to 10 friends in online multiplayer, or refine your skills versus formidable AI. It's designed to be equally accessible for first-time and veteran FPS players with an infinitely high skill cap that will take players hundreds of hours to refine and master. It's built on Unreal Engine 4 and it was done by 1047 Games, a passionate group of Halo fans whose experience and love for the genre transcends the typical development team. Splitgate Arena Warfare will be dropping May 22nd. Next up, we have Dauntless, which is coming to the PlayStation 4, Nintendo Switch, and Xbox One. The PC version has been out there for a little bit, and Dauntless is an interesting case where when this game was announced, there was an incredible level of anticipation and hype surrounding it. Unfortunately, a lot of wind got taken out of its sails due to the announcement of Monster Hunter World and everybody flocking over to that game, and Dauntless having a similar premise. The game itself takes place in a fantasy setting where a cataclysmic event has torn the world apart, releasing monstrous creatures known as behemoths that prey on the surviving humans. Players take on the role of slayers to take down behemoths, collecting loot that they use to craft and upgrade weapons and equipment as to take down larger and more powerful behemoths. While hunting, the game plays as a third-person action game. The player uses a combo system to attack the creature while monitoring their own health and stamina gauge. So you can see... From a gameplay standpoint, it has a lot of resemblance to Monster Hunter, however, it is a free-to-play title and it's definitely got its own unique elements and I dig the presentation and it's great to see that it's coming out on a litany of different platforms and hopefully it gains some sort of traction when it does drop. Next up, we have AVA Dog Tag. AVA Dog Tag is a first-person military shooter. The game's key feature is its complex class system. You can freely select from three classes, point man, rifle man, or sniper, and based on the formation of friendly and enemy troops, the combat status changes. Compete in a teamwork-based tactical combat experience by strategically countering for enemies' weaknesses while making up for your own team's weak points through active tactical team formation enabled by class selection. It's a class team set up by gameplay experience and it's further emphasized through various class distinctive weapons which may also be customized through the weapon modding parts. If a dog tag looks like a pretty interesting first-person military shooter, hopefully it delivers when it drops. Next up, we have Lost Ark Online. This is a game that us over here in the West have wanted for so long. It's made an impact over in Korea, and it's a 3D, massively multiplayer online RPG that offers an immersive action-centric playing style and adopts a non-targeting combat system and a dynamic quarter view angle to maximize the game experience. This is one that's often compared to Diablo, and visually, it is absolutely stunning. It's an incredible game to look at, and you don't usually associate visuals like this with a free-to-play title, but Lost Ark Online is next level in that 
that regard. Looks like it has a sizable amount of lore attached to it as well, and the gameplay looks incredibly satisfying. Hopefully sooner rather than later, we finally get our hands on Lost Ark Online. It's been a game that I've been watching gameplay of for a very, very long time. And given the success of games like Black Desert Online, hopefully Lost Ark makes the transition over here to the West sooner rather than later. Next up, we have Crossfire 2, and we don't know much about it outside of the fact that Remedy is working on Crossfire 2 as well as Crossfire HD. Crossfire, if you're unaware, is a free-to-play first-person shooter that features two distinct mercenary corporations named the Blacklist and Global Risk fighting each other in an epic global conflict. Crossfire 2 being the follow-up would have a lot of potential, and I'm interested to hear more, but right now we don't know much, and I doubt that the game is going to be released anytime soon, but nonetheless, do know that Remedy is currently working on it. Next up, we have Lineage Eternal. Lineage Eternal is a hack-and-slash based game and is the third installment of the Lineage series. The story takes place 70 years after the inception and revolves around a battle between descendants of Deboroju and Kenroho. Players are provided with various various heroes called Eternals, each equipped with unique characteristics. Each hero can be utilized in different situations requiring players to assess each and every scenario. There's a dynamic dungeon opening up an array of battle patterns along with an encouraging mission system delivering players with endless sequences of new experiences. Lineage Eternal has a lot of potential and given the gameplay style of this one, I feel like it could be a very engaging and very compelling hack and slash free to play. Next up, we have Dragonhound. Dragonhound is a game that we don't know much about, but it is a monster hunting MMORPG that is currently in development by the team DevCat. It's set in a fantasy world where enormous vehicular mechanisms and powerful automatic weapons collide with dire breathing beasts. So a lot of comparisons to Monster Hunter can be had with this one as well, but nonetheless, it's definitely got its own unique elements, especially with a game like this. Mounted on fast horses, humans fight against dragons and wyverns, and the game will be played on PC with a mobile version planned for a future release. Hopefully we hear more about Dragonhound, but right now information is still a little bit sparse, but the game is shaping up pretty nicely. Next up, we have Ascent Infinite Realm. This is an MMORPG in development by Blue a pretty well-known studio. They've brought you Terra, and they're more known at this point for their work on Player Unknown's Battlegrounds. Ascent Infinite Realm is their next game, and it has you get ready for an amazing world filled with airships, dragons, magic, and excitement. The game has a steampunk-inspired aesthetic and will be focused around aerial combat and realm versus realm combat with players using airships as their primary mode of transport. Some of the gameplay we've seen thus far has looked a little choppy. However, I really dig the premise of Ascent Infinite Realm and there's definitely a lot of potential in this one. Love the steampunk setting and that's a setting that I think can be utilized more in gaming and Ascent Infinite Realm looks to do the best job of utilizing that setting. So we'll see how it turns out. Hopefully Blue Hole delivers yet again. And even if you're not a fan of Terra and Player Unknown Battlegrounds, you have to at least give them credit for the magnitude of games that they've become. Next up, we have Conqueror's Blade. Conqueror's Blade has you master the art of medieval Warcraft in a free-to-play tactical action MMO. Create a unique warlord from 10 different classes and wage war in epic 15v15 siege battles. Employ special abilities, devastating weapons, and cunning strategies to reshape the vast open world into your new empire. You'll vie for control of land and power in a vast and ever-changing open world. Engage enemy conquerors in skirmishes to seize the their land and expand your empire. You'll gather resources, establish trade routes, and improve your castle to see your economy grow and thrive. Visually, it looks pretty good, and it's got an interesting premise attached to it as well. And lastly, we have Kurt's Pell. Kurt Spell is described as an anime-styled action battle game from a third-person perspective. Players can battle it out in both PvP and PvE mission-based battle modes with massive boss monsters. Utilize karma as the method used to indicate weapons and class types when charging into battle, and each character gets to use two types of karma. So if you like that Japanese and anime aesthetic, Kurt Spell is definitely going to offer you something to enjoy, and being a free-to-play title, we don't see a lot of Japanese free-to-play games, so it's definitely interesting in that regard. And that is going to conclude this video. Again, I know a lot of you guys have your negative stigmas attached to free-to-play games, but even on the console side of things, they have become one of the focal points in terms of great game offerings. And even on the PlayStation 4, there's a very compelling lineup of free-to-play games already available, and across all platforms, that looks to grow over the next few years. And do remember that these are only the free-to-play games that we know about at this point. There are always new free-to-play games being announced, free-to-play games being confirmed for other platforms, and usually what you'll notice is free-to-play games tend to make their debut on PC and then transition over over onto other platforms. Only in rare cases do free-to-play games launch on consoles first and then work backwards on PC. So for a lot of these games, they are coming to PC right now, but in the future, if they are successful on PC, that's when you're gonna see them make the transition to consoles as well. So be mindful of that. And that's gonna conclude this video. Thank you for watching and goodbye. 
Hey guys, we hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, make sure to hit the subscribe button, and if you're already subscribed, do us a favor and hit the bell icon. This way you'll be notified whenever we post a new video. That's the best way to keep up with all of our uploads, and we usually try to upload two videos a day. And with the bell icon hit, you'll be notified whenever we do upload a video. As always, thanks for watching.